Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. We are happy to be here once again in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to welcome you, those of you who are viewing with us this morning. I pray God's blessings upon your life as we worship the Lord this morning in spirit and in truth. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God that he made today and he favored you to give you his grace and his mercy. Your, his breath is in your lungs this morning. This is why we can rejoice and give him worship. Hallelujah. Wherever you are this morning, let us just all stand in the presence of the Lord. Just lift your hands this morning and, you know, just talk to him. Hallelujah. Just give him the praise. Just say, Lord, I love you this morning. Lord, I appreciate your faithfulness. I appreciate your grace and your mercy. This morning I am here. It's not of the good that I have done, but because of your mercy, because of your grace this morning. Father, there is none like you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You you are the God of the mountain and you are the God of the valley. I bless your name forevermore. You are filled with righteousness, Lord God. You are filled with justice. I bless your name forevermore. The Lord is lifted above all else, Lord God. All nations shall bow before you this morning. We thank you, your wisdom. When we call upon the name of the Lord, we know that we shall be saved this day. Even in the day of trouble, we will call upon you, Jesus. You hear the cry of the righteous. Father, we bless your name, Father, because you have given us so much great confidence and hope in your word that as we read it, Father, we're able to, oh God, see ourselves and apply your word, oh God, in every situation of our lives. And we can say the Lord is good. The Lord is highly exalted. The Lord be magnified. You have been righteous. You've been good, Father, towards us. Oh Lord God, we bless your name, Lord God. We shall not be ashamed this morning but we say, Lord, it's because of your faithfulness. This morning I am here to worship your name. This morning I am here in the congregation is to declare the goodness of the Lord. This morning I am here, Lord God, is because of your goodness, your love, Father. I am in best of health. Hallelujah. We are not at the hospital. We are not at the prison. This morning our hands are not cut. We can lift it before him and say, the Lord be blessed. The Lord be praised this morning. Hallelujah. We hallow your name this morning. We hallow your name this morning. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I hallow your name, Abba Father. Your word says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty when the mountains and the difficulties comes in. But because you are under the shadow of the Almighty, no weapon formed against you shall prosper because of the blood of Jesus hallelujah I bless your name father I thank you, Jesus, for the peace of God. I thank you, Father, for the strength of the Lord. This morning, we are so grateful. We, we have so much to be thankful for. Five years ago, we were hit with Hurricane Maria. Some of, some of us, we have our homes that are safe. We have rebuilt. We have been doing well. So, therefore, we have so much to be grateful for. We have our children with us. We have our loved ones alive and well. Our homes are in, our, our homes are, some of us are in perfect um, condition. So, therefore, we have so 
so much to be grateful for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord be praised. The Lord be praised. The Lord be praised. I bless your name, precious Jesus. Thank you, Father. We've got so many, has so many memories. You know, so many bad memories of Hurricane Maria. But this morning we are here. This morning the Lord has caused us to be alive and well. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we even remember those who have had difficulties, Father, bad memories. I pray God's strength upon their lives and God's peace upon them this morning. God will be able to carry them through. Father, I bless those, oh God, who have been going through the same difficulties, Father. And we all got a retaining of their minds. Lord God, carry them through. Through your blood, through your presence, Jesus. Come on, let's just celebrate. Let's just bless the Lord. We thank you, Father, for overlooking our nation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let God be rise. Let our enemies be scattered. We will call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus, I bless your name. Jesus, I thank you for watching over Dominica. I thank you for divine covering. I thank you for divine protection. The Lord is our rock. The Lord is our shield. Thank you, Father. Your eyes are not closed that you cannot see us, Lord God. Hear the cry of your people. I bless your name forevermore. And I just give you all the worship and I give you all the praise. I say thank you, Jesus, for covering us, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's put our hands together to the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You have your Bibles this morning. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 21 from verses 1 to 1 to 22. I bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is the word of God. Whatever is in there, it is for our learning. It is for our direction. It is to give us instruction. Hallelujah. It's not to bring us down or to say anything about a negative about us, but that we are able to take the word of God in heart and that we can search our lives and, you know, apply it to our lives in any area. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And it goes, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it with us whoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. Amen. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And high look and a proud heart and a plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. But of everyone that is hasty, only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. The way of a man is forward and strange, but as for the pure, his work is right. It is better to dwell in a corner of the house top than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is perished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. 
Thank you, precious Jesus. Thank God for his word. There's one thing we cannot do is to change the word of God. If we say that we are believers and we are Christians, we cannot change the word of God. It applies to every one of us, one way or the other. When we read it, it applies to our lives when we take time off. Thank you, Father, for his goodness and his word is pure. His word brings correction. His word brings truth. When the word of God is with, I always search my heart and I say, Father, let your word guide me. Let your word purify me. Let your word sanctify me in all my wrongdoings. Because if I humble myself before him, he's able to exalt me and he'll be able to do that which is right into my heart. I just always want to make sure I'll allow the word of God to take control over my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The word of God is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you, Jesus. It is for our learning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your name, my Father. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, Father. Let As we get ourselves prepared for worship this morning, church, don't get tired. Because this morning is to be a privilege for you as an individual to bring your worship and your praise to God. It's not for the pastor or anybody else who is there. But you find it fit this morning because of God's goodness. What he has done for you during the week. You find it fit this morning and that he's worthy to come into the congregation to lift your worship. To lift and to bring up your worship before him. So this morning, don't, don't, don't do it because, you know... Or for anybody, or you turn it wrong and say, This person is not there, or this person is not there. Don't keep your eyes wandering all over this place. Let your spirit be uplifted. I pray that you have had a deep relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning or during the week. And if you have not, this morning we have the opportunity to do it collectively, to do it as a body, to say, Lord, I bring my worship to you. Let my worship be acceptable. Let my worship. Oh God, be pleasing before you, Lord God Almighty. I bless your name. Just let's just lift our hands this morning. Let's just lift our hands this morning. The Lord be praised. The Lord is worthy. Father, I bless your name, Lord God. I thank you that you are God above all else this morning. You are worthy to be praised. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Even in the green pastures, you allow me to lie down, Father. You protect me from wolves. You protect me from serpents and scorpions, Lord. You feed me, Father. Then you give me drink by the living waters, by the rivers, Father. I bless your name this morning. Lord God, even our cup now is being overfilled because of your goodness, because of your favor. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy to be praised this morning. Let the presence of the Lord rise in this place. Come on, church. Open up, lift your voices this morning and declare the goodness of the Lord as we welcome the Water Waven Pentecostal Church as they lead us in worship this morning. Hallelujah. Lord. Come on, church. Let's just worship. Just, just come. Just create the atmosphere. Just create the atmosphere of worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the worshipers arise in this place. Hallelujah. The dead cannot praise him, but we who are alive and well can praise him this morning. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. One who deserves our praise. Hallelujah. He alone is worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we bless your holy name, God, we worship you in this place, we exalt your holy name, we have come, Lord, to give our praise to you, Lord, we have come just to say thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for another day, thank you for life, 
Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We exalt your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. To give back to you I have come to say thank you Lord I have come to give back to you I have come to say thank you Lord I have come I have come to give back to you
unto you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness towards us, Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Awesome and wonderful are you, Jesus. We give you praise this morning. With everything that is within us, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. We say thanks a million, Daddy God, because you have been so gracious. You have been so merciful. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Jesus. What can't you do? What can't you 
impossible. Sickness, you got to go. Disease, you got to go. Troubles, you got to go. Nothing you can. It's gonna turn them around. Turn them around. Depression, you got to go. Depression, you got to go. Discouragement, you got to go. There is nothing that our God can do this morning. Nothing you cannot change. No situation He cannot turn around this morning. There is nothing you Nothing you cannot change. Nothing you cannot turn around. You are able, great and mighty God. I put my trust in you. He will not forget us this morning. Great and mighty God, we put our trust in you this morning. Oh God, you are great. You are great. You are great. You walked upon the seas, my God. Hallelujah. Great and mighty are you this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are great. You 
from heaven above with we some power and love of God is an awesome talent oh God is an awesome God he reigns from heaven above with we some power and Awesome God.
on God. My God, my God is an awesome God. My God is an awesome God. My God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. My God is raised, he raised, he raised. He raised, he raised. Hallelujah, my God raised. Over the universe, he reigns. He reigns in might and in power. He reigns. He rules and he reigns. Hallelujah. He stands forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He reigns in heaven above. In wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. We worship his majesty this morning. We worship his majesty. We worship his majesty. We worship his majesty. We worship his majesty. My God is an awesome God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, we worship you, Lord Jesus. You are awesome. You are great. We worship you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, in all the earth. We worship you. Just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hand, Majesty, Majesty, we sing Majesty, Majesty, forever I am changed by.
worship your majesty My, your grace your grace your grace your grace has for me just as I am before him you know right now the world is is mourning the death of the queen and if you look at the procession everyone who passes because she's like majesty to them they bow you know we serve a king of kings and because we think we don't see him with our own natural eyes 
we, we do not really know, may understand what is his majestic, how his power is all powerful. So when we can sing this song, majesty, it is your grace has found me just as I am. Thank you, Father, empty handed, but I am alive in your hands, Father. I have nothing to give. I have nothing, Father, but I'm alive in your hands. Majesty, I can bow. I can bow, Father, and say, you are my majesty. Thank you, Jesus, forever, forever, forever. I am changed this morning. I am changed by God's love, by God's goodness. Sometimes when some of us have looked at the lives that we live, today we can say, thank you, Jesus. It is by your love. It is your grace that has brought us free. It is your love who have carried us through. Thank you, Jesus. And today we are living a different life, a life that is able to bring glory and honor unto him. So therefore, when we say majesty, we need to take pride and dignity in that because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The whole world must bow before him. Presidents and kings and princes and princesses and duchess, they all must bow before him one day. Today we can stand before him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put our hands together to the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We serve a mighty God. We are celebrating the great God this morning. Father, I thank you for salvation. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that I am changed, Father, by your love and by your grace this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I try every day of my life to make Jesus my priority. Thank you, Father, that I can speak with him and communicate with him every day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking for strength to take me through the day. I bless his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. This morning, church, we are going to pick up our morning tithes and offerings. You know, let's just rejoice in the presence of the Lord. As you give, may the Lord continue to bless and expand your borders. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord give you his strength this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Worship him.
Father, we chat in heaven. We want to thank you this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your loving kindness that is better than life. And this morning, Father, we just want to say majesty. 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 You are the great one. For all the gods of this world, they, the Bible declares that they are idols. We thank you, Father, that there is none like you, none to be compared with you. And this very moment, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the givings of your people. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Father, that we are here today. Some did not make it for the end of the week. Some did not make it to see this morning, but we want to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing each and every one of us here today as we continue to give good measure. As we continue to give praise down, shake it together. As we continue to give into your kingdom, Father, that your name be glorified. Holy Spirit, take control. Take full control. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Majesty. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. May have your seats. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have our announcements for this week. Praise the Lord. We have prayer meeting online at 7.30. Hallelujah. 7.30 p.m. Prayer meeting. Everyone is invited. And please be on time. Thank you, Jesus. We have Bible study also on Thursday online at 7.30 p.m. May you be part of our Bible study. Please take note that the RVCF is hosting a consecration service on the 25th of September at the Good News Baptist Church, now known as the House of Restoration, which is the church down here, at 5 p.m. Let us all plan to be there. Amen? Next week, Sunday, from 5 p.m. at the... House of Restoration, known as the Good News Baptist Church. Amen? Hallelujah. All leaders and ministry personnel are reminded to make every effort to attend our weekly services. Be part, be encouraged, and be supportive. Amen? This is our announcement for this week. Hallelujah. I personally want to say congratulations and I believe on behalf of the church to Sister Regine in her, at the CXC, she did her seven ones. Let's put, let's put our hands for Sister Regine. We are very happy. You may the Lord continue to bless you. And as they usually say, go for the stars. May the Lord continue to keep you. Amen. Hallelujah. We are very proud of you, Sister Regine. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all stand as we do our declaration. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three. By faith, we declare that revival is coming this week. A new wind is blowing, bringing life to every dead thing. The unrighteous will be saved. God's spirit will move in the land. This whole land shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. And in the mix of the years, the Lord will revive his people. We believe and confess that the whole of evil forces on people is being broken. And they are being delivered from the power of evil. Men and women will yield more to the spirit of the Lord. The church will come alive from spiritual deadness. 
to our glorious church full of his presence. I believe and confess that what will waver is a fruitful place. Our church is experiencing supernatural harvest. The ground is softened up for the seed of the word of God. Every seed we sow will bring forth fruit. Men and women will come to the knowledge of the Lord. The fallow ground will break up to new life. New growth will spring forth. The harvest will be plenteous. The hearts of men will turn to the Lord. What in Waven will be filled with the knowledge of God. What in Waven shall be saved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Jesus. Let's put our hands together as we welcome our pastor as we introduce the minister. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let me say a pleasant good afternoon to each and every one of you. You may be seated. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be glorify God and to worship Him and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Bible declares that God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise God. Let me also join with Sister Avril and congrats Sister Regime for her job well done. Amen. Praise God. We also, we also want to congratulate Pastor Eddie, George daughter, who did a, a fabulous job. She got 14. Amen. I mean, the young people are just smart. They're smart. And especially when the, when the children in the church, they are leading, that's very important. Amen? And parents, you have to caution and take care of your children. Take care of them. Huh? Amen? Take care of them. And um, if you realize that most of those that are doing extremely well are girls. Isn't that so? And where are the boys in church tonight? Where are them? Even those that are in church, where are they? Huh? Ah, I see. Mothers, we have to, I know we don't have many fathers there, but we have to caution them to bring them in church. If you walk in the alley, we have all them young boys in the alley. I'm planning to put a camera in the alley. So that'll be okay. I don't have to fight with them. I can put a camera in the alley. So we'll see where they'll go next. You know, it's, it's important for us to, to understand that our young men are the future of our community, a future of our church. They are the future of, I mean, if, if you want a strong community, if you want a strong church, we need to take care of not just the women, but we need to take care of the men. The men are very important. The young men especially, I mean, they are faced with all different difficulties and situations in life, and we have to spend some time with them. We have to bear the patience with them. You know, sometimes I lose patience. I say, God knows why. But we have to bear the patience with them. Mothers, Please allow them not to take, please don't allow them to take control of you. Fathers, please don't allow them to take control of you. Let us be, <coughs> sorry, let us ensure that they are the young men that the scripture speaks of. I call you young men because you're strong. And the word of God abides in you. And we need that in our church today. We need a lot of young men who are strong in God and in the word. I, it was Monday or Tuesday. I was um, at Pottersville. I, I spent some time there doing something. And, uh, and a friend of mine came to me. Well, call him friend. And he said to me, do you know what happened to that person? And the person was just, person was just a few houses away from me where I was standing. And they said, I said, 
don't tell me he's dead. And he was not sick as far as I know. But brothers and sisters, the person and I were supposed to go on a project this past week. And when I went at his home, I met him lying on his bed, lifeless. I mean, lifeless. He woke up in the morning, people saw him, and they think he will make it through the day. He left, and he went into his house, locked his house, went and lie on his bed, and he did not get up. Dead. And I'm saying, what is life? What is life? They just buried a 20 year old this week there. What is life? A 20 year old just buried just this week there. What is life? So many young people are dying. What is life? Why should we behave phony instead of giving God praise and glory and honor? Believers, we need to take life seriously. We need to take life seriously. It will not, you will not take it serious only if it reach home and really reach home. But I want to encourage us this morning. Don't wait for it to reach home. Let us take it seriously now. Amen. Let's give God. All God wants from us is to serve him. All God wants from us is to worship him. To give him the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due to him. It was Solomon who said, The man's duty is to serve God and keep his commandments. And he said, this is the whole duty of man. Serve God, keep his commandment. Why should we fight with each other? Let us serve God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. I might say some things to you that you don't like. But I'm only saying it for your good. Not because I hate you, because I want to see you do well. And you might say some things to me just because you want me to do well. I have to understand that. And I should not hate you because you say some things to me for me to, to do better. I should accept it with love, just as you should accept it with love. Because our duty as individuals, it is to serve God and keep his commandments. Amen? Amen, church? As we go through this week, I want us to keep that in mind. Don't fight with one another. Do not fight with one another. Don't. Let us serve God. And let us keep his commandments. Let us serve him for all our heart and all our soul. I, I don't know, I'm talking to you, I'm pleading to you, but I'm not a preacher this morning. But I want you to understand that even before the preacher comes, serve God. Serve God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Tomorrow, you could, not even tomorrow, today, you could be going down the road and something happened to you. And you never get a chance again. Every individual that leaves the body, that dies, don't have the opportunity again to say to one another, I'm sorry. They don't. If I fall down now, I do not have the opportunity again to say to somebody, I mean, fall down dead. I do not have the opportunity again to say to somebody, I am sorry. While we are in the flesh, let us serve God and keep his commandments. At this time, let me take this opportunity to introduce and to welcome to the podium at this very moment our speaker, Put your hands together and welcome Brother Michael Valerie to the podium. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. morning church amen it is another opportunity that I cherish very much imagine me
and stand up and talk to you about God. Hallelujah. There is nothing great in me, but it is God. And I just want to allow God to use me to do whatever he would want me to do in whatever little ways that I can. If he can use anything, he can use me too. Amen? He can use all, all of us. All of us can be used by God in our separate areas, in our little corners. There are things that we can do and it may seem small in the eyes of men but great in the eyes of God because there's a great reward waiting for you for the little things you do for God here on earth. So never look at what you are doing for God as too insignificant. Put your all into it and don't let nobody discourage you in doing what you can do for God. Because of who you are, I'm going to tell you just now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to talk to us for a very short time this morning on the topic, branches of the true vine. And our text is John chapter 15. We will read from verse 1 to 16. Jesus is speaking here. And he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, or he pruned it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do Nothing. In verse 6 it says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and man gathers them and casts them into the fire, and they are burned. You see that? So the man that abides not in God that's what happens to him. That's, that's who he is. Hmm. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorify that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. For greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. 
Henceforth, I, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but, but I have called you friend, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made it known unto you. So you have no excuse. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Hallelujah. Father, I give you thanks this morning. Oh God, I don't want to be seen and I don't want to be heard. But I want you to be seen through me and you be heard through me. So Lord, may you speak through me, O oh God, and let somebody receive from what I have to say today. In Jesus' name, amen. Branches of the true vine. Talking about vine, we all know what a, what a tree is. We all know what a tree is. A trees, trees have many branches. And all the branches, they are attached to the tree. And they bear the same fruit. Jesus said here, He is the true vine. And we are or supposed to be the branches. Now, why do I say suppose? <laughs> because most of the time, we are not. Most of the time, we are not functioning the way the branches should. And that is a problem. That is a problem. You see, the branch is part of the vine or the tree. And the branch must represent the vine. When you see the branch, you see the vine. When you see the branch, you see the vine because the branch is part of the vine. So any time that branch is not functioning or functioning contrary, contrary to the true vine, something must be wrong. Something is wrong. Because it's supposed to be part of the vine. Because it is attached from the vine. It feeds from the vine. So any time a branch is not functioning according to the vine, something is wrong. In verse 2, he says, not some branches, but every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. Meaning, cut cut them, get rid of it, cut them off. And every branch that bears fruit, what he does? He purge or he pruned it that it bear more fruit. And that is why you would see in the body of Christ, in the church, there are people who flourishes. They move from one stage to another, from one level to another. While there are another set who are at the same place all the time or getting worse. People backslide for whatever reason. Because the one that bearing fruit, God purges you and he takes you to a deeper place in him. To a higher place in him. To greater things in him. 
Why did he say every branch that does not bear fruit will be caught? You know why? Because those branches are liability to the tree. Those branches are liabilities to the vine. They are just there, sucking from the tree. Sometimes you see them green, but they're worth nothing. They don't bear. They are sucking from the tree and thus preventing other fruitful vine branches from developing and bearing fruits. So that is why, that is why the vine dresser, the gardener, the husbandman go and clip off those bad branches. And believe it or not, it is happening even in the church. Now the scripture uses a tree and its branches. But that true vine and its branches refers to Jesus and us. When you see that, don't think it's just a tree he's talking about. He's using a tree. But it's Jesus and us. Jesus is the true vine. And you and I are the branches. What does that have to say about us? We're supposed to be branches of the true vine. Jesus is that true vine, but you and I, we're supposed to be the branches attached to that true vine. Most trees are known by their fruits. Most trees are known by their trees, but, but by their fruits. But there are some trees that does not bear fruits, or they don't bear enough. And, and the reason is, sometimes it's based, based on, on their location. Based on where they are, sometimes too much rain, they get too much sun, or they get too much wind, or the area is too hot, or too cold. There are certain things you will not produce up in the valley, like watermelon, but you will produce it down on the west coast. That's the place for them. Watermelon, cucumbers, pumpkin, you get that in abundance, in abundance on the west coast. Amen? So sometimes because of the location where they are, they don't bear the way they're supposed to, or, or they were planted in the wrong season or in the wrong moon. Now the difference between that natural branch of that natural tree and us is that that branches of the tree cannot help the situation. Cannot do anything about it. But you and I, who are supposed to be branches from the true vine, we sure can do something about our situation. Amen? Wherever you plant that tree, that is where it's going to remain. Because it is a tree. But you and I should not remain where the soil is not good. You and I should not remain where we cannot get enough water, where the wind is too high, where the sun is too hot. You have a choice. In the environment where you are, If that environment where you are is not conducive to fruit bearing, you cannot remain there. You should not remain there. If the atmosphere where you are is too toxic for fruit bearing, you should not stay there as a branch from the true vine. If you remain there, you will die. Spiritually, you will die. So, toxic environment will prevent you from bearing fruit. 
Some of us, we, we, we often go to places or we dwell among people. Or we work with people. And if we are not good for ourselves, they would turn us around. How many times people try to change you into what they want you to be? How many times people try to make you believe what they believe and try to make you deny what you believe? You do not have to remain in an environment that is not conducive to fruit bearing. Remember you are part of the true vine. You are branches, a branch from the true vine. You do not have to remain there and die. Most fruit trees don't bear much, or some don't bear at all, when they are young. But as they grow older and bigger, they begin to bear more fruits. Why? Because at that time, their roots have extended far and deep into the soil. Their branch had opened and at that time, they are mature, and they can bear much fruit. Because a mature tree is expected to bear fruit. Anytime you have a mat, you plant a tree, and the tree is, 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 is to the size of bearing. It is old enough to bear, and it's just they're not bearing. What do you do? Okay. You cut it down. You cut it down. As God children, branches of the true vine, the older we get in the faith is the more fruitful we suppose to be. Amen? The older we are in the faith, meaning the longer you hear, you are here, is the more stuff you would have learned. You would have seen more things. You would have heard more things. You would have experienced more things. So you would be more matured. The longer you, the, the older you are in the faith, is the more macho and fruitful you're supposed to be as a branch of the true vine. And it is embarrassing for the church or the body of Christ when you see those of us who are supposed to be macho Christians are behaving like children. We are doing like what children do before any little thing. We behaving like little children. Amen. We are doing things that mature Christians should not be doing. And then the things that match your Christian should be doing, we are not. In Hebrew 5 and verse 12, it says, For when the time you ought to be teachers... You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracle of God. When you're supposed to be a teacher, because of the knowledge you would have gained 
Based on the time you are serving God, you are experiencing God. You are still there as a baby. Hmm? And are becoming such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses, uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. It says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away all childish things. I remember a comedy that says, I man and I know I man. When I become a man, I put away childish things. I remember me, I was in St. Martin, and I in church, involved in church among a lot of young people, plenty girls. And, um, but I was not interested. I, I, I feel to myself, I'm not ready yet. I'm young. But I remember... One September 30th, it was my birthday. I got up on my knees. I got up and I get on my knees and I, I say, Lord, you know what? I'm a man now. I need a wife. <laughs> I prayed that morning. And I say, Lord, I'm ready to have a wife. That was in September, October, October, the following month, I came to Dominica. My father was sick to death. I came home. And I, I knew Sister Katie. We was in the same church back home. We were, we were friends, speaking off and on. But um, when I came home, we met, and it's like I said, I didn't know he was so beautiful, man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the rest is history. Here we are today. 26 years married. 26, Keto? 26? Yeah, 26? Yeah, 26. And, and this is our product, our, our product. These two here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. When I was a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became man, I do what man do. I put away childish things. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes 5, 10, 15 years save, 20 years save, still drinking milk, sucking on chew palm, wearing pampa. Can't pray, cannot witness. You cannot describe your relationship with Christ to somebody. How good he is, what he has done for you, and why they should serve him. Hmm? You cannot explain to somebody what is salvation. That is not a fruit bearing branch at all. 
First Peter chapter 3 verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We have to be ready. In, not only in word, but in deed. You might not be a Bible scholar being able to describe the Bible from beginning to end. But you know the basics. Stand on it and demonstrate it. Live the life. Live the life. That will demonstrate to somebody that you are a branch attached to that true vine. You are feeding from the true vine. You, 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 you have a relationship with the true vine. You know the true vine. You speak to that true vine every day. When the true vine get water, you feed from that water. When the true vine get, get food, you feed from that food. When the sun comes, the true vine will protect you and nourish you and give your body the, the necessary nutrient that your body needs to develop and cause you to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Be ready. Always to give an answer. You know, people, people criticize us all the time. They just have to know you are a Christian and that's, that's, that's all they need. They just need to know you are a Christian and then you are the worst person around. They, don't, they, they know nothing about you. Some people are wrong you and they are just veying you. Looking for you to make mistake. To say, he, he says you are a Christian. Always be ready to, to be able to give an answer to those who would question that hope that is in you. With meekness and fear. Question. As a branch from the true vine, what kind or quality of fruit that we should be bearing. Or what kind of quality of fruit are we bearing today? Are we, are we bearing sweet and juicy fruit? Or sour fruits? Are we bearing fruits that will attract people to the kingdom or fruits that is chasing them away from the kingdom? We have some guava trees in our yard. And some of them are very sweet. Anytime you could, you could pick one and eat. Some of them are not, not so sweet. But it have this particular tree. Man, that thing's so sour. Not, not even birds eating that. Sour, sour, sour. <laughs> that wasting. And it always have guava on it. And that's just wasting. Nobody touching it. <laughs> Are you one of those? Absolutely not. So this is the question. Why, what, what kind of fruit are we bearing? Are the fruits we are bearing attracting people to the kingdom or chasing them away from the kingdom?
Bless the Lord. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, long or peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And it says, against such, there is no law. These are the fruit that are well groomed branch from the true vine supposed to be bearing. For these are the fruits that will attract people to the kingdom. These are the fruits, nothing else. What you have will not attract people to the kingdom. How popular you are might not attract, attract people to the kingdom. But these fruits, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness. These, these are the, the type of, of characters we're supposed to be. That is the kind of fruit we're supposed to be bearing, especially when we venture out among strange people, among people who don't live with us, people who don't know us. How do we respond? How do we respond when there is a need to show love? How do we respond when there is a need to be joyful and to help, help somebody else be joyful? How do we respond? How do we respond when there is a need To demonstrate peace. When there is a need to demonstrate long suffering, gentleness, goodness. How do, how do we respond when there is a need to demonstrate our faith? To demonstrate meekness and temperance. How do we respond to that? Do we grab it with both hands or do we do the opposite? This is the question for us today. How do we respond when the opportunity presents itself for us to demonstrate and to produce and to show forth those fruits how do we respond what do we do as as the branches from the true vine we should be one with the vine we supposed to reflect the true vine. Hallelujah. That is what we have to be. When somebody see us, they would see the true vine. Somebody should not get choked. When they get too close to us because we are full of thorns. 
Somebody should not be up there, out there carrying scars because of us. In St. Martin, there's a, there's, a, there's a tree, a kind of a, of, a, of a bush of a tree that is plentiful over there. They call it kosher. Man, that thing has some thorns from the leaf to the, to the, to the, to the roots. Is, is. And some areas are just covered with that thing. You just cannot pass. You cannot go. Dangerous. It have Christians today that is just like that. Unfortunately. There are people out there carrying scars you created. When you had an opportunity to display love, you did not. When we had an opportunity to display meekness, we did not. When we find ourselves in a situation when we had to be long-suffering, we run out of patience. Some of us, we lose our temper too fast. We lose our temper too fast. We run out of patience too fast. That is not a branch that attached to the true vine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will know a tree. Not only by its leaves, but by fruits. Amen. There are trees. You will not even know them. Until they begin to bear. And sometimes some of us are so. That has happened to me. Nobody knows who I am until they start to talk to me. Nobody knows your true quality, your true personality, until they begin to interact with you. And somebody might look at your face and think you are the demon or the devil in hell. Until they begin to interact with you. After all, you are a branch from the true vine. And we should not allow opportunities to display that pass us by. I remember... A gentleman on my job, he was looking for some sense of spiritual encouragement or direction. And um, he had just started to work with us. And he went to another co-worker of mine and he explained to him his situation. And... Um, he came to me, and he told me, you know what? I went to so-and-so, and I explained to him. And he told me, boy, Mr. Valerie is the right person to go to. No, I, I am not trying to, you know, according to the word, vante myself, or blow in my trumpet. But I'm just telling you how it's supposed to be. He told him Valerie is the right person to go to. And the young guy came to me and he asked me certain questions. I was able to sit down and talk to him. There's one every now and then I have to be feeding him, sending stuff for him, spiritual stuff, scriptures. Up to last week, I sent several stuff for him. This is how we suppose to be. Always ready. To let somebody understand, A, the God that he's serving is real, or he is 
a good person. Give an account, an answer to those who would question you based on the hope that is in you. So what do we do when the opportunity comes to display those characters? Do we grab it? Do we grab it with both hands? Or do we do the opposite? That is my message today. Branches from the true vine. Father, we thank you this morning. Your word says, you are the branches and we are the vine. Father, we are all human. And it doesn't matter how perfect we may seem. We have our flaws. Sometimes we commit folly. Sometimes we fall short of your grace. But, oh God, this morning I pray that you would help us, Father. That we would not be cut off from the vine. But we will be well pruned and fruit bearing branches that we would be able Father to draw people to you for you have chosen us to be part of the true vine because the branches Lord is what you use to bear the branches the tree bears fruit through the branches. So Father, may we not be parasite sapping from the tree, but help us to be fruit bearing. Every one of us, Father, in whatever capacity we can, in whatever way we can, Father, help us today, Father God, Know oh God that you would be able to demonstrate and to portray that true vine to the world. Those who are discouraged, Father, for whatever reason, oh God, we pray that you would touch them wherever they are. We pray that you would bring them to the place. Where, God, they can hear and understand who they are and what they're supposed to, be, to do and who they're supposed to be. We pray this morning, Father. Help us today to be fruitful branches of the true vine. That when others see us, they would see the true vine. When they see us, they would see you, Father. Help us to be the branches that will bear the fruits that will attract people to the kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. of the true vine. Put your hands together again for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. It's so important for us as we go through the week to understand who we are. 
you know, a preacher will come, stand here, preach, and then we'll just hear the word and um, leave it here and go home. But I want to encourage us this morning, those of you online, those of you in the church, branches of the true vine, you must ask yourself, are you a branch that bear fruit or are you a branch that will soon be cut off? But we might take that lightly or, or figuratively. But I want to say to you, it's time for us to take some of those things literally. Branches of the true vine. I have a neighbor and um, there is this tree that she haven't cut off as yet because I have been telling her, leave it, it will bear. Leave it, it will bear. And every time she look at it, she's saying, I'm going to cut you. I'm going to cut you because you're not bearing. And I'm saying those trees don't bear that small. Some of them, they bear little taller. It's, it's a gava cherry tree. And as far as she's concerned, I don't want you to go to all in my place. I'll cut you off. But I want to encourage us, you know, when we reach a certain stage in our lives, God is expecting us to bear. And I always say, parents, you have to release your children at a certain age because they need to start bearing. You can't have, the giving, you can't have them giving them milk all the time. Release them. Let them bear. Otherwise, you'll be cut off somewhere, somehow, sometime. I know of someone, as soon as his children reach 18, he says, off you go. I am not maintaining you again. That's it. No more money coming from my pocket to you. Fight your battle. You are 18. You know that, right? Before parents used to release their children at 15, you know. 15, go and get work to do. Today we keep them all 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 27. Sometimes they don't even want to leave. But we have to cut them off a certain time. Otherwise they are not going to bear. And God is saying to us, we must bear fruits. Otherwise we'll be cut off. Take this literally, believers. When you go, on the road, wherever you are. Ask yourself the question, am I bearing fruits? Am I glorifying God? This was a good word. Don't let it just pass through. But let it stay somewhere. And let us put it into action. Am I bearing fruits? When you meet your friends down the road and you start discussing with them, talking to them, ask yourself, am I bearing fruits? Am I glorifying God by that conversation? Can God be praised by the conversation that I am having? It's important, believers. Let's all stand this morning or this afternoon. As you go through the week, those of you online, you're looking at us on Facebook and YouTube. I want to encourage you. Whoever you get in contact with, remember, God needs to be glorified. You need to be a fruit. Whatever the situation, you need to be a fruit. And when you be a fruit, God will be glorified. God will exalt you. God will establish you. God will bless you. God will make you that which he wants you to be. A child that is more than a conqueror. Father, I present everyone before you. Those who are online listening and those who are here today. I present each and every one of us before you, O oh God. Here we are. Father, some of us... Not that we cannot bear fruits, but we really not interested in bearing fruits. Strange. Because your word says if we fail to bear fruits, you will cut, cut us off. 
let us, oh God, come to the realization that we should bear fruits. And not only should we bear fruits, but our fruits should remain. Holy God, minister to us this very moment I'm asking. Minister to those online, minister to those in here, in the name of Jesus. I ask your God to take control. Take full control. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise God. If this service has been a blessing to you, those of you online, I want you to call us at 767-235-1209 or write to us at Watson Waven PC, Watson Waven, W-O-T-T-E-N, W-A-V-E-N, PC, at gmail.com. Let us know what God is doing in your life. And if you want to be a blessing to us, let us also know that you want to be a blessing to us. You want to share with us that which God has blessed you with. We will welcome it. We want to invite you to be with us next week Sunday at 10.30. We will be back on your screen. And let me say to you, may God bless you as you go through this week. And let the peace of God be upon you. And I want to encourage you also, bear fruits. And God will be glorified. God bless you. Have a blessed time in his presence as you go through the week. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God.